the students may get engaged in our classes. Now the next one, I have a next thing called as a weaving a story. Okay. Now, uh, those who are all going through this session, do you remember what is this one is? I'm, I'm sure 100% every student remember this one. This is about a movie called Bahubali, right? But who killed Bahubali? Now again, everyone will answer this question, Katapa killed Bahubali, right? Now, understand this thing. This movie is released around 2017 or somewhere. It's almost seven years back. Still, you remember the storyline. You remember the actor's name, everything. The reason which is scientifically proven is, see, good storytelling. See this, good storytelling helps your audience remember important information. So that is the reason why I usually try to wave in a story which will enhance the interest of the students. This can be done. Uh, we'll see in a couple of minutes. So see, the human mind can easily take up stories. Think about this. Though you might have seen a movie a decade or two decades ago, still you remember the story. Why? The same mind cannot remember subject because it is not so interesting. If you make it interesting, it will be there forever. This is what I believe and it can be done. It can be done. See, understand, my dear students understand this thing. Our brain do not have different memories. For movie, there is a different movie, a different memory. For subject, there is a different memory. No, it is not like that. Our brain has got a standard memory pattern. If you can remember a movie uh, which you have seen a 10 years ago, you can remember subject also. Only the thing is the amount of attention we pay, the amount of interest we will show differs. Let us see how we can do this. Now let us uh, see this thing. I'm, I'm not just quoting it. It is the research which has proven it. Storytelling affects the brain. There are multiple ways how the story affects our brain. The first thing is neural coupling. See, basically what happens is the story activates part of the brain that allows the listener to turn to story. The moment you start telling a story, automatically the interest generates. Think about our childhood days, how our parents, grandparents uh, uh, put us to sleep or calms us down. When they start narrating a story, we just keep listening to them. This is the power of storytelling. The other thing is there is something called as Mirroring, listeners will not only experience similar brain activity to each other, but also to the speaker. See, this indicates the moment I start talking about a story, you get involved in the story and this is what happens in the movies. Most of the time, I usually happen to go and see the movies. You know, people are glued to the screens, rapt attention. If the interval is not there, nobody will move from there. For all the three hours, they will be stick to the chairs, completely giving 100% attention to the movie. This is the reason why you can remember no matter how long uh, you might have seen that movie. A, a 10 years, 20 years old movie, still you remember. So if that kind of attention is given to the subject, nobody can forget anything. The other one, see the important thing is this guy called dopamine. You know, so many research has proven that dopamine is reason for our learning. Learning patterns are based on dopamine. So the moment there is a story or interesting thing, dopamine levels increases. And, and all the learners will be emotionally charged and they will be hooked to that story and that, again, enhances their interest. So this is how we can engage our young brains, our young students. Last but not the least, cortex activity. There are many centers which are activated the moment an, an interesting story is taught. See, don't get me wrong that uh, subject can easily be converted into a story form. Being teachers, we need to go a little extra mile to get that, to weave that story. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how we can do this. Now, let us start with very basic things. Right from the first year, we are doing this chemical reaction. Right? We all know this. You just use a Bunser burner or something or a heating mantle to heat a reaction vessel. Why do we do that? Because... If the reactants are provided enough heat energy, they will get converted to products. This is a simple rule of chemistry. Before doing any chemical experiment, what we usually do is we heat up the reaction mixer. What are we, what are we doing? You are enhancing the heat energy. Right? right. See, what is this? Is. So according to the first law of thermodynamics, energy, it's, it's a conservation of energy. You, your energy can change forms, but it is neither created nor destroyed. Now apply here. So you are giving a heat energy. 
it can transfer into another energy that is what is converting reactant to products you cannot destroy it it just transforms what is the next one second loss is entropy of an isolated system always increases or put it in a simple way if there is a hot object is there it loses heat and turns into a cold object what do you mean by this hot object you just heated this reactant and you have increased the temperature it has become a kind of hot object by losing energy it is converting into products the same thing the first part is chemistry this one is thermodynamics both of them are interlinked now this is in the lab in the laboratory then what do we do for human body in human body there are a lot of reactions are happening you know this is what we read in biochemistry the chemical reactions which takes place in a biological system is what is biochemistry numerous reactions are taking place then how the reactions are taking place can you can you do the similar thing can we heat can we heat our human body no it's not possible we have a constant temperature you cannot do that then how can the reactions will run it is not by thermal energy it is by chemical energy and what is that chemical energy in the human beings that is atp adenosine triphosphate look at this atp how why it is, uh, is so essential is atp is converted to adp by releasing energy how much is that energy 32 kilojoules per mole so this is how human body reactions will take place without taking thermal energy we are using chemical energy and what is that chemical energy atp and why atp is so efficient because when it converts to adp it releases energy using this chemical energy all the reactions will take place remember the biochemistry uh, glycolysis like first reaction glucose is converted to glucose 6 phosphate how is this possible glucose uses atp and atp is converted to adp and glucose 6 phosphate is generated this reaction is possible only in the presence of atp why atp provides enough energy so that the, this reactants are converted to this products and that's the reason why atp is very essential it becomes a chemical currency of human cell now what are the functions of this atp it is involved in cell signal in dna rna synthesis neurotransmission active transport muscle contraction energy supply all these physiological functions are under the control of atp you know this is the reason why you know cyanide cyanide inhibits the formation of atp people die by taking cyanide because it blocks the atp generation the moment atp generation is not there all these things are not possible if these physiological functions are not possible what happens death is imminent now now understand this thing we started with chemical reactions we have seen what thermodynamic class is now we are getting into biochemistry uh, correlating how human reactions takes place right now look at this now how do we get this atp the major route for getting atp is glycolysis now understand the importance of glycolysis glycolysis is so important because it happens everywhere it is considered as universal energy pathway why it happens in prokaryote it happens in eukaryote the bacteria which attacks us has got the glycolysis human beings we have this glycolysis every this that is the reason why it is called as universal energy pathway and what happens in glycolysis glycolysis is six carbon containing glucose is converted to three carbon containing two pyruvates see again again go back to the word glycolysis lysis i told you about this lysis antimeba histolytica lysis break down what are you breaking down you breaking down glucose what is what is happening a six carbon glucose is broken down to give three carbon pyruvates but the important thing is in that journey you have gained atp now this is one of the major source of generating atp this is not the only one this is the major after that you have electron transport chain oxidative phosphorylation is there from there you get atp <coughs> but the point is the importance of glycolysis right you know glycolysis starts with glucose we all know about this ad see i'm not promoting this brand i i just want you to understand the importance of uh, glucose you know glucose gives instant it is called as instant energy drink why again again let me tell you something when people become very weak when they are admitted to hospital they will be administered a 5% dextrose you know what is this dextrose dextrose is a dextro rotatory of glucose again again understand the importance of this words the reason why you are giving dextro rotatory is only this stereoisomer is active in human beings 
why glucose because it provides instant energy when you are weak when you are suffering with fever and some other things if you want to boost up your energy the physician will prescribe a 5% dextrose right now look at this one lorem ipsum dollar sit amen this is a latin phrase which mean, which means nobody likes pain look at this what is this dollar this is not an american currency dollar here they are talking about pain nobody likes pain so you see these words everywhere everywhere you see these words so understanding these words is what helps us to improve our interest and in all these things now see i'm i'm just connecting a lot of things we started with chemistry we went to thermodynamics we went to biochemistry and finally we are here is the story ends here no look at this see one of the major threat nowadays in in human population is cancer right now the uniqueness there are a lot of unique things with cancer and one of the unique things in cancer cell in tumor cell is in the tumor cell glucose gets to pyruvate and lactate see look at this 85% it it just goes majority it goes with glycolysis now see only 5% it goes with oxidative phosphorylation in mitochondria you have citric acid cycle is there oxidative phosphorylation is there through which atp is will generated but it is only 5% sorry it is only 5% in tumor cells so this is what is called as warburg warburg effect so the scientist warburg has recognized in cancer cells there is a lot of glycolysis now the reason is the reason why it needs lot of glycolysis is it needs a lot of atp atp immediate atp you know till now we have seen it gives immediate atp uh, understand this thing see to get atp you have multiple ways are there as i told you uh, it starts with glucose converts into pyruvate pyruvate is converted to acetyl coa acetyl coa gets into citric acid cycle and then gets into mitochondria to produce atp but converting glucose to pyruvate immediately releases atp whereas for other process to citric acid cycle and then oxidative phosphorylation it takes some time that's why glycolysis is called as immediate atp generation unlike all this process now cancer need lots of atp why it is constantly multiplying it is continuously continuously multiplying and it needs lots and lots of energy that is the reason why it is it completely goes with glycolysis so what are we looking at we are looking about a, a pathological condition cancer in which glycolysis is going on with high amount of speed why because it needs lot of atp and in in, in and in immediate sense hence it is going with this okay what about this thing now look at this now in cancer cells we realize that glucoglycolysis is going on with a rapid pace so there is a drug called as 2 deoxy glucose if you use this drug glycolysis inhibitor look at this guys if glycolysis is inhibited atp is depleted if atp is depleted can cancer cells survive no it's the way so this is what is the research is even in lenger you can find an a research about this so what is this 2 deoxy for your information this 2 deoxy d glucose is also tried to treat corona even in our doctor we labs come up with a powder called 2 deoxy d glucose which was supposed to cure corona how again the same thing the corona virus also behaves similarly to this cancer cells virus 2 completely depend upon glycolysis to get energy you know you know virus in a way is very similar to cancer virus what is the problem with virus virus undergoes continuous proliferation in short time virus will multiply 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 and, and these variants will go and attack other cells so again continuously multiplying means it need a constant supply of atp or energy immediate energy how it is possible with glycolysis so this is the physiology of that organism so dr reddy labs and some other uh, research organizations have come up with the same drug see the the moral is any drug which is completely depend upon glycolysis may get affected with this drug. and if you block that pathway glycolysis is blocked atp is depleted when atp is depleted a virus cannot multiply or cancer cells cannot multiply and you can use this drug to treat that particular condition 
what is the uniqueness of this glucose? Look at this. This is what is glu glucose is. First carbon, second carbon. Now, two deoxy D glucose. So at second position, oxygen is removed, and this is what is two deoxy D, D glucose. This a small change inhibits glycolysis because of structural similarity of the drug. A simple drug. Now, this simple drug can be used to treat virus as well as cancer problems. Now, see what I did right from the beginning. So, this second part, I have started a story talking about in intertwining all the pharmacy subjects. Look at this, what we did. First, we started with chemistry. In the chemistry, I told you how the reactants are reactions happen and how the heat energy is used. Then we moved on to thermodynamics or physical pharmacy, applying how this is happens, how the reactants are converting products because of conservation of energy or how, how it is being uh, led to products because of entropy. Now in human beings, what do we have? In the lab, you can use uh, external thermal energy. In human beings, we have ATP and this is what we read it in biochemistry, right? Now. ATP, how it functions, why ATP is so important. All the physiological functions of ATP are required for the cell survival or human survival. And this is what we read it in physiology. And then we have seen how this ATP is generated by glycolysis. Again, we went back to biochemistry. And then we have seen what all the pathways which are completely depend upon this glycolysis and that is cancer as well as virus. This is what is pathophysiology. Is. Now, how can you, how can you block this? By understanding pharmacology, you can come up with this drug. Again, it goes back to what? How the drug is doing all these things because of the structural similarity. This is what is medicinal chemistry. Is. Now, this is what I say the beauty of medicinal chemistry or chemistry is. See, we started with chemistry and we have ended with chemistry. So the science entirely revolves around this thing. Now, understand what we did. We have, see, the whole topic is based on a drug which can be used to treat virus and cancer. But what all things we have seen? We have seen the chemistry, thermodynamics, biochemistry, physiology, pathophysiology, pharmacology, and finally, medicinal chemistry. We have developed a story combining all the subjects and concepts, putting it in a package. Now, this is what I call it as a, a package story, uh, intertwining uh, story. So this, if we inculcate in our teaching, like if we can combine different concepts, automatically student interest will, will be enhanced. They start thinking about this, okay, this is what is happening. See, usually we tend to teach all these concepts in a different way. Thermodynamic loss, just students will mug up. Connect it with a concept, it gets into their mind, into their brain. They don't need to buy out anything. No, it is not required. I'll, I'll, I'll give you some other things. See, entropy, 